Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Those of us who are on both committees get twice the time. Is that correct? Divided by two. Yeah, I see. Thank you. I figured. Uh, I, I did want to mention we, there was some talk earlier about spouse employment, and Senator Sinema, Langford, myself, and uh, Senator Fisher got a bill passed in the Senate about a month ago requiring the federal government to allow remote working for military spouses at any government agency. So that's a that's a step forward. We need to get it through the further process, but it has been it has been passed by the Senate. Um, how much of this is legislation and how much is implementation? One of my life mottos is implementation is as important as vision. And it sounds like what we're really talking about today is implementation. And do you need new authorities? Do you come to us with recommendations for any changes to the law, additional funding or additional resources? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vazirani, do you, do you need anything further from us, or do you have the authorities you need, and it's just a question of, of, of working the system? Senator, thank you for that and the opportunity to, to, to express. One of the things I think we've we found is that the work through the Joint Executive Council has really helped in this collaboration and in taking the authorities that you provide us and implementing them. I like we the idea of the Joint Executive Council. By the way, do you does the Joint Executive Council ever meet with uh, veterans and veteran service organizations have focus groups, polling, and uh, just input uh, from from your customers. S Senator, the, uh, the the working committees do have those kinds of engagements, and we do have them at the Joint Executive Council as well. We do have uh, we do bring people in to to talk through ideas. So we continue to work that. I think through that uh, interagency process. We've worked through it, and we're, we're understanding where we may have difficulties or barriers. And Senator, if, as we do that, we appreciate the opportunity to come back to you and let you know if we do need additional authorities. I, I hope you will, and I hope all of you will take advantage of, the, of my invitation to suggest uh, any changes in authorities, any federal statutes that are obstacles to the, the implementation. Uh, here's a question that occurs to me. We're talking about TAP, which I understand is a mandatory program. What would the base commander do if a soldier skipped a mandatory weapons safety class? My suspicion is he or she would make sure they got to that class. Is this, again, an implementation at the base commander level? S Senator, we continue to work through that and, and ensuring that the commanders who have the responsibility to ba balance the mission readiness along with care for the service member. And that's why we have the, the commander engaged at that 90-day point for that capstone to review how the, the service member is engaging. And as Mr. Bursler has indicated, we're creating that dashboard so that a commander can track how a service well, member is Something correct. seriously wrong if 70% don't meet the one-year guideline. That, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a serious problem, and it seems to me that's an accountability problem. So I hope that's, that's, a, that's a priority. Um, we talked about credentialing. Isn't one of the issues with credentialing state laws, and to what extent are we able to work with states and state compacts? So if you learn to be a plumber or electrician in the military, you don't have to go out and spend a year going through a state process to get a license to be a plumber or electrician. Mr. Labor, how about what, what's your view of that one? I thought Aj was going to say something. I apologize there. Uh, Senator, one of the things that was passed in 2021 that there was an ability for states to have reciprocity agreements with regards to accepting those licenses and credentials. And, and is that happening? That's my question. That's one of the things we're working on with the states. We're trying to ensure that they understand, one, that those that agreement exists, but also for the military spouses to be educated about that as well, as well as the Department of Defense's legal departments to ensure that they can provide support to those military spouses to have conversations with the state departments. I, I think that would be a place where some emphasis should be placed to work with the states, press the states, because all the states talk about one of helping veterans. This is one clear way they can do it. I, I'm out of time, but one additional issue that has come up in other hearings we've had is financial counseling. Uh, that's necessary for for many veterans uh, because they're suddenly out into the into the wild west of uh, uh, civilian life, and uh, so financial counseling is something that's important. Thank you all. And I, a hearing like this always focuses on the negative, on what's not being done. You all are doing a lot, and I just want you to know that we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator